Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And what you're looking at right here is what you would classify as a type of a nebular cloud. These clouds generally can be produced by anything from, for example, an expulsion of the outer layer from a star to sometimes a star collision to, of course, a supernova. But once in a while, we discover one of these clouds that at first makes a lot of sense. But as we study it more and more, we discover something completely unexpected and very, very unusual about it. And today we're going to talk about just one such object that very recently was discovered to be absolutely mind-blowingly unique, and we don't really know how to explain it right now. The object known as CK Vulpecule that was originally discovered back in the 17th century and was essentially classified as a nova, a very cataclysmic event with an extremely bright explosion. And although for many years we thought we knew exactly what this was, Turns out, it's something completely different. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, because this is actually a pretty interesting story. So first of all, this object was originally found back in 1670, exactly 350 years ago, by a French astronomer by the name of, and bear with me, I'm gonna try this, and tell me what to read. Feel free to correct me in the comments below. And so back then, in June of 1670, he noticed something unusual in the night skies. A new star, a nova. And because our knowledge of cosmology and astronomy back then was very limited, it wasn't entirely clear what exactly caused this, but these events were happening all over the place, so the scientists started to record them. It was actually called NOAA because back then it referred to the idea of a new star, the birth of a star. So some scientists, or some early scientists, did actually believe that this is exactly what's happening here. But eventually a lot of these NOAA also produced these beautiful clouds, and it took us about 300 years to finally figure out what's causing them and what essentially produces them. Some are definitely much easier to explain, like the Cat's Nebula that you see right here. This here is what we usually refer to as Planetary Nebula. It has nothing to do with planets, unfortunately that's just a term that kind of stuck around for many many years, but essentially this is exactly what's going to happen to our sun as well. Eventually it's going to release all of its outer shell, most likely in the next 5 billion years or so, and this material will then form this beautiful nebula that might actually resemble something like this as well. But some of these nebulae are also formed by other events. Some of these events are more mysterious, like this one right here. This is known as V838 Monocerotis, and it took us a while to figure out what's really happening here. We think that it's most likely some sort of a collision between two stars that resulted in an explosion and a very, very large amount of material being released. Today, we also refer to these as red luminous nova, at least sometimes especially when they have a lot of red on the inside. But when it comes to the CK Vilpecule, the object that was originally discovered back in 1670, up to this point we were almost completely convinced that what's happening here is what's known as a classical nova. Which by the way, despite its name, has nothing to do with supernova at all. Essentially, a classical nova is a type of an event that normally happens in binary systems where one of the stars is a white dwarf, basically what our sun is going to become in about 6 billion years, and the other star is a much larger, sometimes even more massive star that kind of gets some of its material stolen and it eventually forms an accretion disk around the white dwarf, which once in a while, sometimes even periodically, reaches the critical moment where enough material accumulates that it essentially explodes, creating a very bright nuclear explosion that's visible across the entire galaxy. And this is what we call a nova at least a classical nova, and in most cases this is actually the most common type of a nova explosion that we see in the universe. Although the thing is, when these nova become repetitive and repeat more than once, we no longer refer to them as classical nova and actually call them recurrent nova. But this is just semantics because theoretically we believe that even classical nova will eventually repeat at some point. And so essentially this is what we thought, or actually believed for many many years, happened here. It had all the signs and all of the parameters of a typical classical nova, and until a few years ago, most scientists took this for granted, referring to this as a typical example of a classical nova. Until about five years ago, when at least a few scientists started questioning this and actually proposed that it was more likely a result of a collision between two stars. So not necessarily just a typical nova, but an actual collision. And one of the main reasons why the scientists started to question this is because further investigations suggested that there was an unusually high mass of different gas with different types of composition present in this particular location. In other words, there was too much gas for this to be just a nova. And also on top of that, a classical nova would not really produce other elements except for maybe hydrogen and helium. 
Yet surprisingly, other elements were being discovered in this location, suggesting that something else must have happened. Then, back in 2018, another study came out discovering that there was actually quite a lot of aluminium present in this cloud as well. And generally speaking, aluminium can only be produced when two stars collide, and these stars have to be pretty massive. So, in that sense, the discovery of aluminium in these clouds actually was a big surprise and a big mystery. And by the way, that study is right here and also in the description below, so if you want to learn more, the link is in the description. But then, another study only a few months later came out claiming that this couldn't have been a collision between two stars, because inside the cloud there were also elements that were not actually normally formed when stars collide and they could not have survived a star collision. And so as a result, the new explanation was that it was actually a collision between what seemed to be a white dwarf and a brown dwarf, an object that's not really a planet and not really a star. And this may have resulted in what we were seeing based on the observations of various types of organic molecules and a lot of other chemicals present. And back then, this kind of made sense. It also satisfied a lot of the requirements for what we were seeing and of course presented us with a very cool explanation for what we may have actually observed. But that's of course until, once again, recently, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. Because of the original observations of aluminium in there, mixed with general curiosity for what exactly may have happened here, a new team of scientists decided to investigate this even further, and they discovered that at the edges of this cloud, there was also some iron. And specifically, somewhere at the edges of this cloud, on both sides of this unusual shape, they found the presence of really fast-moving iron that was slowly moving out of the system. And what's really important here is that it was also possible to measure the redshift and the blue shift of this iron. In other words, it was possible to discover how fast it was moving. And to everyone's surprise, what they discovered is that this part right here is actually moving at least 10 times faster than we initially thought. It's moving close to about 2000 km per second, with the inner part moving a little bit slower at about 900 km per second. The original estimates suggested that the speed was only about 200 km per second, a 10 times difference. And well, you might have already guessed what this means. This means that this object is at least 5 times as far away as we initially thought. In other words, even though initially we thought it was about 1600 light years away from us, it's actually closer to about 10,000 light years away, which also implies that this unusual nova, this unusual explosion, was at least 25 times stronger or more powerful than we initially estimated. And that of course means that it's most likely not just a typical collision between two stars, and it definitely isn't some sort of a classical nova either. This is way too powerful to be a nova. But it's also not powerful enough to be a supernova. So it's literally something in between. And we have a term for that. We usually refer to them as ILOT. Intermediate Luminosity Optical Transient. And although some of these can be explained as failed supernova or possibly some other very powerful events involving stars, in this case we actually have absolutely no idea what happened. So basically, what we believe to be a classical nova and what was not questioned for pretty much hundreds of years is now to be believed something completely unique, very different, and something that now requires an extremely accurate investigation trying to figure out what actually happened here. Now, chances are it's probably still some sort of a star collision or maybe star explosion event, or possibly some sort of an event such as a supernova that just didn't go as planned because something disturbed it in the middle, but we still don't really have any actual answer to this. At the moment, based on the elements observed and also based on the overall energy produced, it just doesn't fit into any explanation that would be agreeable and that would actually explain everything without any questions asked. In other words, it's definitely yet another mystery for us to figure out for the next few years. But naturally, since there are signs of iron and aluminium and also signs of some other elements produced in supernova, the chance for this being a failed supernova is much higher than being something completely unexplainable. And also because of the bifocal shape produced, where there are essentially two emissions in two different directions, this implies that it was probably some kind of an event involving two objects, possibly two different stars. But at this point, everything else would be a guess. So we just have to wait and see what the scientists discover in the future and what exactly may have happened here back in 1670. And until then, well, thank you for watching. That's all I wanted to mention. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support his channel Patreon or by buying the, um, this, this right here. The wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.